by now you're probably very familiar with how API requests work and you probably know that it is quite costly to make an API request. It takes time for the network to respond and maybe if you are even paying for an API, it does cost money to make each API request. So what we're going to be covering in today's lesson is how we can cache these requests so that we don't have to spend so many resources on making the same API request over and over just for testing or for updating data that doesn't have to be updated so frequently. And practically, I'm going to be using this dummyjson.com slash comments. So we have a lot of comments here and these don't change. So there's no point in calling this API more than once. And the program is going to look like this. So we have the URL and we have a place to cache it and this will just be called comments.json, then we can fetch that data and we can display that data. The first time we run it, it's going to say that there's no local cache found and it's even going to give us this error that there's no directory of comments.json. And then it's going to go ahead and fetch that data from the API and it's going to create a new local cache. And the great thing about this is that it creates the JSON right inside our project. So the next time that we decide to go ahead and run this, it's going to fetch it from the local cache and it's going to be lightning fast and it's going to get all that data without having to make a network request. And in case you do want to update the data, you can go ahead and set this to true. Let's say some time has elapsed and you want to get some fresh data. Now, when you run the program, it's going to create a new local cache because we've said that we don't want the old data anymore, we want some new data. So in general, this is a very basic concept in programming that will save you a lot of resources when you are debugging or when you have a production app that shouldn't use the latest resources 100% of the time. But let's go ahead and delete the comments.json and I'm going to create this project from scratch so you can follow along. So I will close the sidebar for now. And the first thing we want to do is go ahead and import JSON and we're going to import the request module. So make sure you install that if you're going to make a network request. Then we're going to go ahead and create a function called fetch data. We're going to provide an asterisk. So we have named arguments only. And here we're going to go ahead and say update of type Boolean, which will be set to false initially. And that will be toggled depending on whether you want new data or not. So if the update is equal to true, we'll go ahead and say that the JSON data is going to be none. Else we want to try everything in the following block. And looking at my code right now, I forgot a very important parameter. And this is the JSON cache which will be of type string. And that's just the path where we want to have the JSON saved. So back inside the try block, we're going to go ahead and try with open because we want to open the file of JSON. This always happens. I, I don't understand why Python decides to show me all of this great information, but this always happens and it's quite annoying. So with open JSON cache, we want to go ahead and read it. So provide the R as a file and the JSON data is going to be the JSON.load and we're going to load the file. So it's going to try to open this file and if anything goes wrong, we're going to have to, of course, create the JSON data. So if this actually worked, we can go ahead and say fetched data from local cache. So in this case, we do have JSON data and it was locally cached. So nothing's going to go wrong and we're going to return this. But in case something does go wrong, such as accept, and we have some errors that we want to accept, file not found, and json.json decode error, because it also might be the case that we can't decode the JSON because it's not valid format. And we're going to take these as an error. And here we will go ahead and print a formatted string that says no local cache found. And we'll just go ahead and create this formatted string and insert the error right here. And I actually am going to surround this by parentheses. And we also need to go ahead and set the JSON data to none. Now you might be noticing a pattern that if anything goes wrong and there's no JSON data, we are explicitly telling the program that there is none. And this is for a very simple reason. And if we go right below the if statement, we can go ahead and check if there is no JSON data. So if not JSON data, then we're going to perform the following code. So print fetching new JSON data. And we're going to say creating local cache. And the JSON data is going to equal the requests.get. And we want to get it from the URL, 
which I have not yet created. And that's another parameter we have to add up here. So URL of type string. So the URL is going to be this URL over here. And we want to get the JSON from that. Then with open JSON cache, hello, big message. We're going to go ahead and write this file. So W as file, because now we have some JSON that we can actually insert into our folder. So with open, we're going to go ahead and dump this JSON. And the JSON is going to dump the JSON data as the file. And at the end of this, all we have to do is return the JSON data, because that's what we actually care about when we're fetching the data. All of this other stuff is just for convenience. We first check if we want to update the JSON. If it is true, we set the JSON to none so that we can create new JSON data. Otherwise, we can try to open it. And if there's no local cache found, we still go ahead and create new JSON data. And at the end of all of this, we return that JSON data. Now to actually use this, we're going to go ahead and create an if name is equal to main. And I'm going to paste in the URL. So URL is going to equal this URL over here. And the JSON underscore cache is going to equal comments. Uh, let's go comments.json. So you need to make sure to give this a name that you can remember inside your project. And that's where all your JSON data is going to be cached. And in case it's in a different folder, you need to go ahead and type in folder slash that and it's going to place it there. Just make sure it's in a location that you can access. Now the data is going to be of type dictionary because that's what JSON is. And we're going to fetch that data and to update it, we're going to say update will be false. And the JSON cache is going to equal the JSON cache and the URL is going to equal the URL. Now, if we go ahead and print the data, we should get the same message as from earlier. It's going to retrieve it because there's no local cache. So if we run it, no local cache found, creating a new local cache. And we're going to get the JSON data at the bottom as before. And if we rerun this, this time it's going to fetch the data from the local cache. And as you could see, it was lightning fast once again. So we got the data directly from our project folder, which was saved right here. So we didn't have to use any valuable resources to do this. But anyways, guys, that was the concept of caching data in Python. I hope this tutorial helped. And with that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.